Hi, Dan. <laughs> Hi, my question's for Max. Um, so I'm the CEO of not-for-profit housing developer called Nightingale Housing. Mm. Um, even Love after, your work. Thank you, thanks very much. Um, even after nearly a decade worth of projects, we are still facing difficulties in our attempts to create more well-designed, sustainable mm. homes, even often from otherwise progressive local councillors who are often influenced by the NIMBY YIMBY debate. My question to you is this. Where do you and the Greens sit on the spectrum between NIMBYs and YIMBYs? And how do we convince those who are against medium density development to get on board for the greater good? Mm. Yeah, great question. Uh, look, I think the NIMBY YIMBY debate is a bit of a false debate. Uh, Nightingale's a really good example. So just because everyone in the panel but me what, talked what about What is the... a YIMBY and a NIMBY? Please explain to people watching saying that's an acronym I'm not all Yeah, across. sorry. NIMBY not in my backyard? And Yimby, the opposite, yes. Yes, in my backyard. Yeah, it's yeah, a new yeah. movement. Um, okay. Everyone but me talked about the Greens um, public so developer no, proposal. If you could but just directly no, answer no, but this the is question. A, this is directly answering the question. So, the way to solve the, that issue is often what Nightingale has done, which is you build beautifully designed homes integrated into the local community next to public infrastructure where it's also affordable. There are a lot of communities I speak to who would support medium density developments in their area if they knew their children could afford to live in it. Like, we have a situation where construction workers building a lot of these huge, not Nightingale, but these huge private developments uh, can't afford to live in it, which is exactly why, by the way, the Greens' proposal is what the Australian government did post-World War II. OK, which is I, I just need to press you on yes. that, because, Dan, you've said that you've actually faced hurdles, even though... Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's not his experience. Can you just walk me through what's yeah, happened? Yeah, I think probably, yeah, down on the ground, kind of trying to get it done, it's, it's harder than ever. And we're facing it from local, state, federal, all the politicians, everyone's talking about it. But it does seem to be getting more and more difficult to, to get projects happening. So do you stand with the... It's the Yimbies, isn't it? No, Yimbies, yeah. look, Pete, are you, you know, a yes in my backyard guy? Oh, certainly to Nightingale, absolutely. So what like, is selective would, about who we, it is? If we had it, well, yeah, of course, because we want it to be affordable, we want it to be well designed, and we want it to be integrated into public infrastructure. Uh, look, the the point is at a broader level. Just to answer your, on the planning question. Um, planning is not the major barrier to housing construction at the moment at a macro level. Even hardly an ally of the Greens, the Westpac chief economist, has pointed out we have a record number of approved developments that developers are not building. A.V. Jennings, for an example, a large developer, they have 11,000 okay. approved lots. Uh, Just quickly, this is important, on planning, but have only released 173 last year. OK, but Max, there, there are feed. local councils and Greens are on them yeah. that have stifled development. Well, actually, the Green... Do you oppose that? Well, the, no, the, the Greens the, supported the Nightingale, uh, the one that... It, the well, Greens... actually, Dan said he had lots lots of issues over a long, long period of time. Yeah, there was, yeah, yeah ex-Greens councillors. Ex-Greens, yeah. quite yep. crucially. Yeah. They're not in yeah. the Greens anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but... I'll give you a list of Greens opposing <laughs> 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 but, but planning is always brought up because politicians don't want to talk about building public housing. Well, they we don't can talk, talk about, about both of them rents. because it all but, works together. But, but planning is not the barrier to our housing crisis and like immigration, it's a distraction used to avoid talking about the solutions we okay. know have worked in the past. I'll, I want to bring in some other people if I can. Andrew Grant, is, is Max right? Is planning not an issue or is it part of the story? Well, I mean, it sounds like Max wants to decide who can build and who can't build. I mean, the reality is we've got a housing crisis. If someone wants to put up the money to build uh, a big block of flats, they should be able to build the flats. Uh, if people want to build social uh, and affordable housing, that's also an important part of the overall system. We just need, at this point, uh, the most houses we can get safely constructed, I mean, that is the key thing. So, unfortunately, there have been a lot of councils that have vetoed developments. Uh, that's why it's very important that all tiers of government work together to highlight where there are bad judgments being made uh, and people are not acting in the long-term interest of the country by stifling development. Do you support this new medium density expansion? Yeah, I do. I think it's a good house? idea. Yeah? I think it's the only way we're going to solve the problem in the big cities. OK. Um, that's interesting. Cameron, do you think it's a solution? No, I, th I, I think... Plan <laughs> how, do I, how would I put it? It's great that people care about what's happening in their area. I, I think there are plenty of outdated planning rules and cumbersome ones that should be updated, so I'm definitely on side there. But if you zoom out and look at the cities and look at the patterns of development over time, what you find is that when the market rises, we can build double, triple the number of dwellings that we did. When the market falls, somehow we stop. So what's regulating the pace of development, regardless of the density and the location, is the market conditions. And that's why 
construction's falling off now. We're, we're orchestrating a decline in that by putting interest rates up so people don't spend so much on housing. That's what we're trying to do. And I think we're missing some of the important dilemmas in the debate here. In talking about the, the, the landlord, uh, was it Anne-Marie, mm -hmm. your question, we're, we're missing this tension between the, the availability of houses for homeowners and the rents people pay and the incomes of landlords. And we're missing this tension between um, managing the macro economy and being able to buy a house. Because the way we manage the macro economy is to make it expensive to buy a house. And so I think this is why you know, housing is such a, a difficult question. And I think I'm very supportive of, you know, we can at any time build a house for anyone we want and rent or sell it to them at any price we want. And I, I'm surprised that that is not the first thing we talk about. OK. Um, Andrew, I'll give you a quick response before I get to the next question. Yeah, Dan, I think uh, as an economist, planning and zoning is fundamental. We need to get uh, more, uh, be pushing more on this front. And if you look at experts, whether it's Ed Glazer in the US, whether it's the Grattan Institute here, whether it's somebody like Peter <laughs> Tulip, it's very clear from those experts that planning and zoning is one of the reasons why we've seen uh, housing affordability steadily slip away for so many Australian households. OK. Uh, that's just, so, I'm sorry, that's so, just not true. <laughs> that is not true. What's like, not we, true about it? That, that planning is the reason that house prices are so expensive. No, no, no. Planning is part of the reason. No, no, it's not. Mean? It's just not. It's like, not part it, of... Wait. No, 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 I can, no, no, no. I have to ask you a clear yeah, question. You're saying it has nothing to do with it. Almost nothing to do when you compare it with, say, something like the capital gains tax discount and negative yeah. gearing. When the capital gains tax was introduced, discount was introduced by Howard in about 1999. Before that, house prices used to go up at about the same price as wages. After that, they went up at three times the rate of wages. The idea that this, there's this sort of magical prop set of property developers, okay. only they were let, allowed to build enough homes to bring down the price of housing. Does anyone seriously think that the only reason that property developers are not building reason. so many homes no. to bring down the price of housing is because of the planning system. I don't or think even anyone is saying it's not the only. I think there's a, the argument here that there's a combination. Anyone, of so anyone have this? Well, I'd love to hear from international Rose, yeah. examples because, of course, Andrew's referred to a number of eminent economists, as of course he would, but I would refer to places <laughs> like Auckland and Minneapolis and actual cities in this actual world that have actually changed planning laws yeah. and that has actually resulted in lower rents or lower growth in rent. So sure, as I said at the beginning, I am in no way an advocate of saying fix the planning system and the housing will come. Of course it's more complicated than that. But this dismissive idea that the current complex and cumbersome planning system is not a genuine and significant, not the only, but genuine and significant barrier is wrong and is not the experience that is had on the ground by people genuinely trying to build homes like Nightingale, like state governments. As a, as a minister who is responsible for building social and affordable housing in the state, I find the planning system to be a genuine barrier to the delivery of the social and affordable homes that we are funding. Cameron's laughing because <laughs> Cameron's well, laughing because well, studied Auckland and okay. it's not... Cameron, I'll well, give you a quick reply, but I want to sorry. get to the next question. Did I read in the paper that you've postponed 3,500 public houses in New South Wales today? Is that...? No. 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 Nice, nice try, what? mate. We have resurrected <laughs> a policy for the, the former government cancelled. So get your facts right before you want to have well, a go. 3,000, <laughs> how many is it building now? Sorry? How many is it building now? So the former government had a redevelopment proposal at Riverwood. This is getting into the details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and with this is a national but audience. That's but right. Just, yeah. But no, it's absolutely nonsense to suggest that the New South Wales government is, is cancelling proposals to build public housing. In fact, we are resurrecting okay. proposals that were cancelled by the previous government. All right. If you're just joining us, you're watching Q&A Live with Catherine Little, Cameron Murray, Andrew Lee, Rose Jackson, Andrew Bragg and Max Chandler-Mather. What a night. Plenty to get to. <laughs> He's the CEO of Homeless.